All right, guys. Today we caught a coyote. Rained all night last night. He tore this set all to pieces. So uh, I'm gonna show y'all what I'm gonna do in order to make a decent remake out of this, and uh, hopefully to help y'all out. All right, guys. So just got a coyote this morning, like I said, and uh, we're gonna have to take all this dirt and put it back here to have a backing. Because the coyotes usually run down this uh, little lane right here between the cut over and the pine trees. So uh, it doesn't do good with dirt on this side. So we're going to move all this dirt right back to here. And uh, I'll get back with you as soon as I get that done. Okay. So now I got my uh, grew all that dirt over to the side up here in front of me. Got my trap here. And uh, it's an MB550. And uh, I'm telling you right now, this is the best trap that you can buy. And I worked on a lot of sand over here where I'm trapping at now. So I really don't have to use nothing to dig other than my hands just because sand's so easy to work. And another good thing about sand is that uh, it um, even when it rains, you can still catch coyotes because um, it, the water just filters through it really, really good. And I'm telling you, if you trap and you don't own one of these, this is the best thing a trapper can buy. You can punch holes with it. You can pull your uh, stakes out of the ground with it. I use super stakes. So those are very hard to get out of the ground. Um, so I'm just put a hole right here. And uh, it'll be good enough right there. There's my old bait. So I found my old hole, which is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Put that back down in there. And I might go a little deeper actually. Yeah, I believe that's good there. I like that a lot better. Oh yeah. That's a little dirt out of it. Alright, so now to set the trap. Yeah, let's take this, put that there. This right here. Alright. dog off so it's got a clean fire right away no skipping beats or nothing want when he steps on that pan for it to go off and I use polyfill to go under my pan um, I used to use the little uh, their little plastic like covers um, get some of that dirt off there anyway I used to use a little plastic uh, coveralls that you put on here and um, I don't know. I just didn't personally like them. Uh, if you had a fox in the area, he come investigated the site, the set. Um, he would, uh, he'd feel it under his foot, and he would dig your trap up every single night. And I hated it. I couldn't stand it. I could not stand it because foxes, they think it's a game to them, and they'll play that game until they get caught. Alrighty, let's see. So I'm gonna put. I like to offset to the right, it's just my personal opinion or my personal preference. Uh, I'm about a little bit further than my fingers apart. It's about two inches longer than what this is and about three inches to the right, two and a half, three inches to the right. It's just how I like to set my traps. And um, so here we go. And this is what I love about polyfill. Take this dirt here. You can sift over it. And if you try to do that right there with the uh, uh, the cover that goes over top of it, it, um, it'll slide around on you when you're doing this. That's one thing I don't like about those, but that's what I love about this uh, polyfill here. All right, find my pan. Got like a little circle around my entire trap, and I'm just going to press down all the way around that circle. Where that extra dirt was. Now this is the most important part about setting the trap is making sure that everything is solid. Because that coyote comes in and he feels something that's just loose, out of place. You know, all the rest of the dirt around here is not loose. It is very, very firm. So you want everything around this trap firm except for the kill zone. So, 
And I always face my dog towards the hole. I didn't say that, but I always face my dog towards the hole. No reason why. I just feel like that's the best place to have it, honestly. I know a bunch of people are like, well, you got to have it 2 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, you know, all that stuff. I just, I just don't do that. All right, so we got my pan here. About that far. So here, another two inches, and then that far to the right. Um, now, yeah, there was a coyote here last night, so I'm not going to do anything but put some bait in the hole and uh, maybe a little a long distance call lure just because it rained last night. And if anybody hunts, they know when it rains, all the scent gets knocked down. So uh, I think that long call lure will look work, will work really good uh, after a rain. So let me go get that and I'll be right back. All right, guys, sorry about that. I had to go get my uh, little bit of sheep's wool and my rubber gloves. Forgot to grab those. But um, anyway, I'm going to throw a little bait in here. And I'm going to use, it's called, uh, this is from Trapping Time. My buddy Trapping Time, he's on YouTube too. Go check him out, he's pretty cool. Uh, let's use some of his blackout bait, which is what I caught this coyote right here on. And uh, get a good little bit of that, throw her down the hole. Throw my sheets wool down in there. take some uh, this is called gusto it's made by cavens gusto made by cavens and I'm telling you one thing when you get this in the mail you can smell it because you know they tape up the bottle you can smell this through the tape bottle Shoo! you smell it through the tape bottle and through the taped up um, box that they send it in or the mailbox you know the the little cardboard box they put in put the stuff in and they tape it up too and you can still smell it and uh i'm telling you it's it's very very potent potent very potent i think i'm gonna put a little bit of this white uh lightning in a bottle now this stuff right here is called a bunch of coyotes for me too a bunch and uh what's pretty cool about this is it's a goo for one and secondly, it glows in the dark, which um, I honestly don't think the glow in the dark part really helps anything uh, as far as catching a dog or anything, but uh, it's pretty cool. Something, something different. All right, so now we got the bait in there, long distance call, uh, lure in it. I can smell that stuff from here. Now, that's the gloves I just handled the bait with. You don't want to handle the bait with these gloves and then touch your trap with the same gloves you handled the bait with because instead of doing what you want to do is draw all your attention to the hole right here, you're drawing it to the hole and right here where your trap's at. And you do not want to draw attention to the trap because they will dig it up. And they'll, pull, they'll come out here and they'll dig it and they'll have this trap pulled out of the bed, flipped over upside down, and the trap never goes off. But um, before I cover the pan up, I just want to give you a look at how the set looks from a up, uh, different point of view. So I got my, my holes right here, and there's the pan. And like I said, you know, that it's a little bit of a difference there. So but that's what catches them. Offset it to the right a little bit. That's got it. So now to finish this set up, I've got to uh, sift some more dirt over that pan because we don't want it showing. Do not want it showing. So I'll grab some more loose dirt. Let's rest of that sheep's wool. Toss that in there. Now some people take their sheep's wool and they'll put the bait on the sheep's wool. I just I just don't do that. I'll put the bait down inside the sheep wool on top of it because I've had coyotes in the past when I put it inside the sheep's wool they'll pull the sheep's wool out with the bait in it eat the bait and leave the sheep's wool so I think that if you got the bait in the bottom of the hole the sheep wool is between the, the bait and the hole then um, 
you know, if they even if they get the sheep wool out, they're still gonna work this set because they want the bait that's in there. But now that I've got the auger with the drill, that hole's so deep, they're not gonna get in there, get their uh, nose down in there and get the bait or the sheep wool out without getting caught on this trap. So let's go ahead and sift some more dirt over this trap here and kind of blend it in, blend it in a little bit. I'll put some of the trash that was left over right here on the left side of my trap. So my pan's here, and I got this stick right here because I don't want them to step right there. I want them to step right here. Get some of that those sticks out right there. You don't make this the most presentable place to put their foot. I'm gonna get another stick and put it right there because sometimes I put them up top. I don't want to step in there. Um, this is where people get a little. They go too much, and they you will shy a coyote off if you put too much stuff around your um. Around your trap. Now, if I was to do this right here uh, and square off that hole, he's probably not going to catch the trap there or ca uh, get caught. You might catch one that's brave, but nine times out of ten, you won't. Now, bobcat, it doesn't matter. They do not care about um, stuff being around the trap because they're not scared of anything. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Um, what I've done before, too, is a little bit of dirt. I don't really blend in too great. And sift it over that stick. So, anyway, that's a that's a finished set right there. Just a little dirt over right here where I have my knee pads at. Don't want no hard edges. I want it to all look very close and similar, just the same. But uh, a little sift in here. And that'll do it. That's a remake. Best thing about working with sand is it's so easy to make a remake out of it. A hole here, trap beds there, and uh, I'll pick up that poly extra polyfill there. And that when it comes out of my bucket, I'll sift it back over. But that's the road that'll come down to come right down that road right there and uh, get caught right yonder. But um, anyway, I appreciate y'all checking me out. Um, stay tuned for more videos, and I'm gonna show a few more tri tips and tricks of how I like to catch coyotes. But um, that's just a simple little dirt hole remake. And that's the best thing about trapping in the sand is it's so easy to work with. And very forgiving in the harsh weathers as far as rain, snow, and stuff goes like that. But anyway, I'm rambling. So anyway, y'all take it easy. Uh, good luck trapping this year. And uh, we'll see you later.